want everyone to give a warm rumble to Leonard Paul, please. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, my name is uh, Leonard Paul, and uh, yes, I have been working in games for a while. So <clears throat> I started back in 1994. Yep. Woo! Yeah. Ah, you zoomed me! Yeah, so uh, anyways, the great thing about me uh, being in the industry so long is that you can ask me questions. Uh, and that's part of what the presentation is about. I have started my own school, so it's the uh, School of Video Game Audio. And uh, yeah, I've got all sorts of people from around the world coming and uh, asking me all sorts of game audio questions. So if you're interested, have a look at the website. There's my Twitter handle, and let's try this thing. Okay, so this is all about uh, game audio, but if you do games in general, this is... Uh, probably useful to you because you're probably going to be using audio, all right? So as far as the system that I'm using, you're probably used to like FMOD, WISE, that kind of thing, or built-in if you're using Unity, you can use, you know, Unity script and stuff like that to, to change the audio. But Pure Data is another way of doing audio that's quite flexible. And if you're curious about it, all the details are here. So it's a visual-based scripting language. So that uh, area down in the bottom right-hand side is like a little uh, pure data patch. And it's similar to Max MSP Reactor. It can be edited interactively. It's been in development for over 20 years now. Uh, and it's great for synthesis and generative music. So the demo that I'll show you is all synthesis and procedural audio and generative music stuff. So there's no sampled sound in it, which is you can definitely combine pure data with sampled sound, but I just wanted to show that it's great for synthesis and generative music. Uh, it's crowd platform and it's uh, free. So here's a couple of different ways that you can integrate it into uh, Unity. So you can use libpd, which is basically taking the pure data stuff and just running it live. Or you can try and cram it through uh, this UPD or Unity for PD. But the thing that I'll be talking about a lot is using heavy, which is really like if you're used to using like, uh, oh gosh, what's a Python or something like that. If you want to go for performance, then you use libraries where they actually encapsulate and like compile down like things for performance sake. All right? Okay, I won't touch that. And then, so heavy, what it does is it takes the pure data code and then compiles it into wise, Unity plugins, you can get actual C++ out of it. Or another cool thing is that you can run it online on the web. So it actually will convert your pure data code to JavaScript. So you can put it onto a web page. <coughs> and it's optimized for all the platforms. And it uses its own code. So it's actually not running the same PD code. And there's the website for it to try it out. So it's a bit hard to read. But what you do is you just upload it. And then it spits out the C++ code at the end of the day. And so that means that you don't have to do anything tricky. There's like, you know, builds for Unity. So what it does is it takes the code and then it puts it into uh, like a native Unity plugin. Does anybody use Unity? Anybody? I use Unity. Yes, domination. But so this could be quite helpful for you. So the advantages are that it compiles and optimizes. Uh, it's free if you're not making something commercially. Uh, there's a compiler that's updated automatically. You just upload it, and then it spits it out of the web page. Uh, if you use Unity, you can access audio clip data. You can export to online, like I said. And there's a lot of uh, existing libraries that do cool stuff like granulation. But unfortunately, not all uh, objects are supported. It could be a little bit more robust, because it's just finished their beta. So. <clears throat> There's definitely more work that can be done. Because sometimes, like I was able to get things to compile, but then when I put them into Unity, crash. So <laughs> sometimes you have to try it out a few different ways to actually get it to work. And then, of course, there's a licensing cost. But for indies, maybe there's a way of contacting them and asking them if they would give you a break. So this is what the whole demo that I'm going to show you is about, is it goes from Unity to open sound control over to pure data, all right? So open sound control is just a way to have uh, different programs talk to each other. And you can do this over like, uh, you know, like uh, the internet. So you could 
contact or remote, like uh, <coughs> a computer, or you could just run it on the local host as well. So if you're working with uh, consoles, that means that you could be running pure data on your PC and then debugging stuff at, in real time and changing the audio on your PC and changing it on the Xbox or whatever you're working with. So what you can do is work like, you know, doing prototyping and then once you get everything down the way you want it, it's kind of like, like I was saying before, it's like taking stuff that's written in Python and then compiling it down to C++ and then it's actually super optimized. <clears throat> so you can contact me at the uh, SOVGA.com, so that's School of Video Game Audio. Uh, here's a little patch. I'm going to just show that in the demo. There's a generative music patch. It looks very scary, but, you know, once you actually start playing with it, it's not too difficult to understand. So here's the demo. So, yep, there, good stuff. So everything here is synthesized. So that means all the audio, including the music, is all done using mathematics. So when I hit stuff, that's all simulated through math. So that's, it's, not, it's not wood, it's actually math. I'll show you later. And also the tank engine is, is simulated in synthesis as well. Actually, not so good at shooting either. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on, you can do it. Yes, finally. And you can hear the music kind of come in a little bit. And basically, there's more music when the tank health goes down. So it's kind of like, as you progress through the game, you sort of get those bouncy things a bit more, it's a bit faster. And then here, what I do is I, I move from using open sound control over to using heavy. So this is actually, if you look over there at that green thingy, like, I'm not going to touch it, but anyways, over there, it shows the CPU and it's way under like 0.1%. So that's running optimized code in a native plugin. Yeah. So you can see the tanks are going up and down. And what's happening is that you can send information back. This is pure data here. And I'm sending back, like every time I'm playing uh, bass notes, and I can modulate the size of the tanks using the audio back from, you know, uh, <coughs> pure data. Right? And so every time there's a hit, it's slightly different because it's using a noise, like white noise, as a sound, a sound source. And here is hitting a rock. Now it's crunchy. I've got thunk, crunch, and crackle there. And then there's the rest of the patch. <clears throat> and then I will show you that and even when you hit other things with missiles, it will sound as though you hit them. And here's the music stuff. So I've got like uh, four different layers. There's bass. Uh, and you can see what I'll do is I'll slow the music down by changing the tank health. So I can do that while the game is running. I don't have to stop and recompile the game. So you hear it's quiet. <laughs> and then it gets faster again, right? So the music gets more exciting the closer you are to defeating the, uh, the tank. <clears throat> Kick, hi-hat, snare, and then there's the mix at the bottom. So it also brings up the mix the closer you get to destroying the other tank. And... There we go. Okay, all right. So yes, that's my presentation. Thank you.